What up? This is Robert Ory. Ory, three pointer. There is it. You might know me as Big Shot Bob. To Ory for three. Oh, unbelievable. This guy is off the charts. What's going on, Big Shot Bob? Robert Ory from downtown. Oh, episode number two this week, the Big Shot Bob. Shoot around. Uh, I'm Rob Jenners. That, of course, is seven-time NBA champion Robert Ory. Uh, we do this second show every week, so if you ever got a question for the show or something we didn't get to on Tuesday, you want to send it our way. We're at Big Shot Bob Pod pretty much everywhere. Uh, Facebook, X, Twitter, whatever the hell it's called. Facebook, uh, uh, Big Shot Bob Pod at Gmail, all that stuff. Um, I wanted to bring this to uh, to the show and ask you this question. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest NFL stories this week, we didn't really get to it on the Tuesday show, was the way that the Chiefs lost in epic <laughs> fashion this week in the NFL. So um, the Chiefs were trailing, and they get this wild play where uh, Mahomes throws to Pat- to uh, Kelsey. Kelsey gains five, six yards, turns around, laterals the ball to um, uh, Kadarius Toney, who turns up field and scores a touchdown Bang, Chiefs take the lead, here we go. They came back to win the game, except for the fact that Kadarius Toney was lined up in the neutral zone when they started that play, and he wasn't like, oops, a a toenail over the neutral. This dude was almost on the opposite side of the freaking football where he was lined up. It is beyond stupid. And it's one of those things where you look at it and you're like, and I know Patrick Mahomes threw a big fit. He was all pissed off at the refs. When you look at it, it's egregious. It's so stupid. Um, so my question for you are what are what are you, what are the penalties that drive you the most insane in any sport? The you, penalties you know, that just piss you off. It's, it's it's so funny. When I looked at that, he's actually they have a picture of him looking down the line. Oh yeah. And you can no, clearly like, see you're, that you're you you're looking <laughs> back at the football, bro. Like you're not even like yeah. kinda in the neutral. Like, you are practically yeah. on the defensive side of the football. That's the sign to say he probably said, Oh, this play is for me. I'm about to do something big. I'm so excited. You know? Yeah, but, I'm gonna get a get a couple steps up. Yeah. 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 But, but I mean, me, but it's like it's just one of those like, oh, come on. It's like it's like for me, I, I, I get so aggravated with guys in basketball who are on who's in the corner and they step out of bounds. You clearly see they running down the sideline already out of bounds, and then they step out. No way you are. But in this, in this day and age in basketball, the guys feel like the further I shoot it behind the three, it's almost like the thing they're going to get more points for that. And just get up closer to the line. So that, and I think I used to not like the charge circle because I feel like if you take a charge, you can take a charge. So yeah, I, the charge circle is the one. But the one that I really want to get rid of is when they say, okay, let's review this shit. They go to the sideline of basketball and they waste five minutes of my damn time reviewing a damn play when all you got to do is call Secaucus or up there in New Jersey, where it is, and say, hey, what happened? Boom, call it in, bam, it's over. Done. They just take too damn long. Yep. Here's Here's my problem. Major League Baseball does this, and they get it wrong every time. <laughs> they will go, okay, we're going to go, because they don't make the call on the field anymore in Major League Baseball. They call New York, and New York makes mm-hmm. the call, and they look at the replay, and they go, here's what happened. They never get it right. The hell is the point of having the replay system if you're going to screw it up every single time? They never get yeah. it right. It's tennis just, is the only one that has it right. <laughs> who is? <laughs> tennis. <laughs> tennis? Well yeah, yeah. well, yeah, because they got that damn little camera that goes, nope, the ball bounced right here. Your ass is out. You yeah. can't be John Macaro anymore yelling at refs and breaking rackets and shit. That, that stuff's gone from that game. Um, yeah. The NFL does a pretty good job. Yeah. They they go over those replays pretty thoroughly. But uh, the lining up on the in the neutral zone to me, you should every teammate in that locker room should be allowed to smack him upside the back of his head because that's a that's the dumbest freaking penalty in the NFL. Yeah. All you gotta do is pay attention to where you're standing. You don't even have to do anything. Just make sure you're not in front of the freaking football. And uh, I just, God, it's so stupid. Question from Chris. Uh, he wants to know, how long, Rob, do you think Monty can hold on in Detroit? As of this past weekend, they had lost 19 straight games. They are 2-20. and 20. Eventually, he, looks- he says, eventually Monty takes the, the hit for this, right? 
I, I don't think so because if you give someone trash and t- want them to <laughs> make something out of it, yeah, it's, it's hard. Make you a chicken soup it. out of chicken poop, man. Good luck. Yeah, it's his first year there, and so you got to give him time to get players in there and, and let these p- players mature because you got Kay Cunningham, you got all these guys you just drafted. You got to give them two, three years. You know, it's almost like I hate to say this, how Philly was for a while. You know, it was trusting the process and they waited. So I think you know you can't just fire him because your team sucks on the first. This is not this. You gave me trash. I know I'm a hell of a coach, yep. but I can't make lemonade out of shit. You know no, what I mean? No, and that, but I, but at some point, and and I he's been there a year, so yep. it's like you gotta you gotta give him God. What? How many? How many seasons do you let him go? Even with a even with a shit roster, I say four. Okay, but hey, I'm a cheap ass. I, how many? How long is his contract? I think it was like six or seven people. years or something, wasn't it? I ain't paying two people to do the same job for yeah. a shitty ass team. Yeah, I want to say it was like six <laughs> years almost. Or, and I don't so know. I, I go give back him and look, six years. Whatever his contract is, you just let him ride yeah, it out. I let him ride it out. Okay, but also you got as an owner, you have to look at yourself too. You got to say, hey, well, I didn't that, give him the yeah, yeah. You can't blame the coach all the time. You got to say, hey, I'm going to the gym. Hey, dude, you better do some magic. Give me some players for my coach. I like my coach. Right. But your seat, is, you, you're in the hot seat. Mm. 19 straight, though. Yeah. Oh. Hey, I, the and Spurs it, ain't too far behind, though. No. No, they're really not. Mm-hmm. You know, but God bless, man. He's mm-hmm. got it tough. A mm-hmm. uh, question from Tito. I am a Dodgers fan. So I had the pleasure of seeing my team pick up some studs over the last few years, including Shohei Otani recently. But not every team gets the big free agency win. Who's the coolest player your team has signed or traded for? Like a, uh, I guess a team that you're a fan of. So who are your teams? We know you're a Mets fan. I about to say Clyde. (laughs) Clyde, okay. I was a part of that big trade. You were you were there for that though. That's but that's that counts Mm -hmm. because you played for the team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh my, I, I, I. I don't have anybody else that's like, like, wow. I think for me, it goes back to the jersey in the corner over there when I was a big Gary Carter fan, and then he got traded from the Expos to the to Mets. The Mets. And, yeah. And I was like, yeah, Mets. They got this young pitcher's name, you know, good. Mm-hmm. They got a guy who likes to eat strawberries on Sports Daryl so Straub. I'm like, shit, I'm a Mets fan now. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. okay. I was in Miami uh, from 1996 to 2006. Uh, so I was working for the radio station in Miami um, doing promotion for the Miami Heat, who were not really that good. They had a young kid named Dwayne Wade that they thought was going to be something, uh, but he hadn't quite broken through yet. And Pat Riley was managing the team, and we were doing all this stuff for the Heat, trying to get butts in the seats. We were doing promotions and I would go to games and we would do giveaways and all this stuff for the Miami heat. And then they get Shaquille O'Neal from the Los Angeles Lakers in 2004. And that city went sideways. That city went absolutely sideways. We had to go do all this promotional stuff for the 2006 finals. They came back to Miami losing O2 to the Mavericks and ran off four straight. Dwayne Wade went nuts in game three. Um, and that place was, and and Shaq was still Shaq, and it was Shaq in Miami, and we went nuts. That was insanity. And I was never a huge Miami Heat fan, but when you live in a city for as long as you do, and you're that entrenched with a franchise, like you do all this stuff for them, and and then all of a sudden they go out and they score Shaquille O'Neal in a trade. Holy shit! The city was on fire. The city yeah, was on was, too, was totally on fire. It's so weird because Shaq asked me. I don't know if he even remember. He asked me to come down to Miami. It was right after the 2005 season. I just had a good season with the Spurs, and I was created. He said, you want to come to Miami? I, I looked at my, my first wife. She looked at me. She says, Fuck no, you ain't going to Miami. Oh, no, no, <laughs> no. no. I, I was like, yeah, I, I, hey, I, this is the first time I ever had friends call me up like, dude, we going to Miami? I'm like, fuck no, I ain't going to Miami, man. No. Oh, <laughs> like, you no. gonna stay in San Antonio? I'm like, yeah. I'll be like, man, I think you can run it back. Man, you should go to Miami. <laughs> Did you want to go? I thought about it, but then you know what scared me off? Is Pat Riley has all these rules and you know you have to have this percent body fat. Oh yeah. This, that. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, nah, I'm good right here. And no state tax. I know there's no state tax there, but 
I'm close to my family, my kids, you know, my daughter was really sick at the time. So I was like, oh, you know what, right, I'm yeah. good. I'm good right here. I, I can get home to San Houston in two, two, two and a half hours. So I forgot. I that's fine. right. That's that close to mm -hmm. Houston. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I get it. But God, that had to be appealing. I was tempted. That had to I be appealing tempted. because, yeah. and again, I don't think anybody knew when Shaq got to Miami yeah. that Dwayne Wade was really going to be what he became. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, I really believe, I think for most people, and I think we saw it after the 05 season, I think they went to the Eastern Conference Finals and lost to the Pistons, I believe. Right. Um, but I don't think, I, I think really it was game three of the NBA Finals in 06 that was kind of Dwayne Wade's national kind of coming out party. Like that's when a whole, everybody went, oh my God, this guy's freaking insane. And he had a mm -hmm. great season that year, but yeah. I think that was really the game where he just put the whole thing on his back and said, let's go. We're going to blow this whole thing up. But yeah, Shaq coming to Miami was the biggest one I got to see. That was a pretty cool one. Uh, Complex Magazine had a list of the top 25 most entertaining sports media personalities. We did not make the list. Son of a... Say what? I know, that's what I said. I was like, we got five listeners. What is this shit about? Um, can you pull the, any of the top 10 most entertaining sports media personalities? Did it's you not... Know? It's not when you... <laughs> But it's how <laughs> that's my that's my favorite. <laughs> I, I had to say, if you Stephen A is probably on it because he yells so damn. Yeah, he's much. number two. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the other, next guy who yelled just as much as him is what's the dude that does used to be a punter, McAfee? Oh, Pat McAfee. Yeah, he's number four. Yeah, Charles. Charles is number three. Uh, Jack. Number five. Uh, you just missed a number Ken one as first top. Is five. Kenny on there? No, Kenny didn't make the top 10. He might be on the list. Actually, I don't think he was in the top 25. <laughs> Neither uh, was Ernie. I was going to say Ernie. Nick. Yeah, Ernie uh, didn't make it either. Is Jalen Rose on there? No, Jalen Rose didn't make the list either. Uh, what about the guys for, um, what's the, the show with the, uh, I can't think of his name now. <laughs> Older, it's a black guy and a white guy that do that show and he weighs a Canadian fag at the end of the show. Oh, um, Ball head black guy. It's not first things first. It, pardon, uh, pardon the interruption. Pardon the interruption. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, it's not Will Bond or. Um, not Will Bond. No, Mike Michael Will Bond didn't make it. Or Corn. What about the one that Luke uh, about to say? One that um, LeBron hates. <laughs> Who's LeBron? He used, used to be with Shannon Sharp in this show. Oh, Skip. Skip. Skip, uh, Skip was number eleven. He didn't make the top ten. Uncle Shannon, by the way, number one. How? Shannon Sharp. Yeah. He's number one. Number one Shannon, on the I list. Thought, I, I thought. I thought. Uh, uh, Stephen A would be number one. No, yes, Uncle Shan's number. Uh, Cameron and Mace, number six. They got a show. I guess so. I didn't even have any idea about that. Uh, number oh. seven was Gilbert. So uh, Gilbert's making Gilbert. a little little hay. Uh, JJ JJ Reddick, number eight. Eh. JJ, um, you know JJ's come on. He's he's making a little noise for yeah, himself. Yeah, I know, but I'm not a huge JJ guy. Yeah. Uh, Michael Irvin, number nine. Michael Irvin's entertaining. Yes, he's uh, funny. And Mina Kimes was number ten. Uh, she that? does a lot of NFL ESPN stuff. Is that uh, she's an ESPN black hair? personality. Was that? She the one with the black hair? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I think that's yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, Mina Kimes. Uh, she's entertaining. So none of the guys from stuff. Fox made it from Fox? No, man. Like some of the, I think Nick Wright was on that list from First Things First. Um, Skip was number 11. Uh, I guess well, Michael Irvin counts because he's doing a little more Undisputed now. Um, uh, Richard Sherman didn't quite make it, but no. Uh, Did Richard it, Jefferson make it? He's trying to blow up. I, Richard Jefferson's on the list. He wasn't in the top ten, but he I forget where he fell in, but he oh, was okay. on the list. Yeah, but it's Complex Magazine that put it out. If you're interested in checking it out, and letting us know, uh, let us know. If, hit us up on social or whatever. If there's somebody that you really enjoy that didn't make that list, um, because I think there's a it's, lot other notable. Like I feel like they had to just throw one woman in the top ten to make it just to make <laughs> it fair. Sexist. Uh, Kay Adams was number twenty four. From NFL Network, who's beautiful. Uh, Joy Taylor came in at 22. The Kelsey brothers came in at 21. Okay. Uh, Perk was 20. Taylor Rooks, B-Dog's girl, uh, at 18. Uh, Draymond Green was at 13. Oh, yeah? And I was like, yeah, I forget. He's, he's got his podcast, and he does all mm -hmm. that stuff for the volume. So, yeah, good for Draymond. Yeah. Question from Jerry. Um, everyone, including Jenners on Twitter. I don't know why he's coming at me. Uh, is <laughs> is trying to convince me that Rick and Morty is one of the greatest shows out there. It is. He writes, I don't get it. I've tried, and I just don't get it. 
Is there something that everyone loves that you guys don't get? Uh, it's a tough question, but I'm trying. To, I can give uh, you one. Give me yours first. Mine is Game of Thrones. Uh. Um, I've watched a little of it. Maybe I haven't put forth the full investment that it, it requires. Yeah. Um, it, it requires a lot. I could never. I had a hard time following families and all the people in the families and the relations to each other. And it's like, I, I understand that I'm into a lot of nerdy shit that you have to spend time on. So I get uh-huh. that. I just never fell into that whole thing with game of Thrones. See, with game and of Thrones, people yell at me. Be- They're like, you don't even know you got to go watch it. And I'm like, Oh God, I've tried. You, you can't be doing anything else when you watch game of Thrones, because if you turn your head and come back, like what the fuck happened? What Who's just that? happened? You know? Who is this person? Yeah. Why are they so naked? You, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just like, <laughs> it's, it's everything. Why does he have a dragon? Where did this come from? You know, it's just, I know. it's, I don't know. Like there, I think there's just a, an investment there that I have not been willing to make. Uh, it, for, for me is uh, it, it was uh, better call Sal. I tried to watch better call it, Saul. Sure. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, I, so, I tried to watch it. And I tried to watch it. I, I just, think. Did you like Breaking Bad? Yes, I like okay. Breaking Bad. I didn't like. I was like, it took me. This is gonna be weird. I love Breaking Bad, but I haven't seen the final two episodes. I just haven't watched them. I just haven't. It, you know, it's it. It sort of ends on a weird note. Um, mm-hmm. I loved Breaking Bad. Better Call Saul, I want to say the first two seasons mm-hmm. are a really slow burn. Yeah. Like you got it. It's not until season three where it starts to kind of catch up to Breaking Bad, where it gets really good and interesting. Okay, but See, the, it, I try. There, <laughs> it is. Once you get past I, the first two seasons, don't I don't really think they touch Breaking Bad in any way. Mm-hmm. So it's a whole separate thing, and you're just like, God, I don't know about this. Once it gets through that, and it gets into, and then all of a sudden, Gus Fring starts showing up, and the Salamancas start showing up, and then it starts to cross over into Breaking Bad. Then it gets really freaking good. Okay. But the first two seasons, man, they are a boof. They they're a slow cook for me. Um, and then flip it, flip that question. What's something that you love that not everybody does? And I can give you mine if you need. Something you just love, and everyone's like, "eh." Um, I, you know what? A lot of people didn't like um, the one on Disney with with. Uh, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be a show. Just anything that you love that people are like, "eh." Oh, well, there's a lot of things that come to that. Because I can give you, I can give you one. I can give you. Give me yours. Mine, mine is white chocolate. I freaking love not the basketball player, the actual food. I love white chocolate. I don't know why. I think it just reminds me of being a kid because we would get it very infrequently, <laughs> and it's just freaking so good. And I had a a piece of white chocolate yesterday, and I was eight years old again. I was just like, oh, so <laughs> and people are like, how do you eat that shit? <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? It's freaking delicious. My sister <laughs> loves loves black licorice. Ugh. And that shit makes me want to puke. Every the scent of it, just the thought of it, I could smell I, I it. Hate licorice, and I'm like, I, yeah. I'll eat red vines. I love red red licorice, cherry licorice. Give me a Twizzler. It has, it has no flavor. It's just wax. I'm like, what I, are you uh, just eating? But I, I like those. That doesn't bother me. Black licorice. <laughs> oh, it's like eating an air freshener. It's just like, oh, it's disgusting. I, I think so. Like my apple jelly did. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, okay. I've never had apple like, jelly, so I can't yeah. judge. But yeah, but no, you know, I, 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 I would literally have to, you know, think about that one because those are hard questions today. You know, like, they are, man. We, we, I got your brain working here. Yeah, you make me think too. It's much. too early in the morning to have your brain cooking. Mm-hmm. I could smell the smoke from Atlanta. <laughs> it's the good little man is in there thinking. I know, right? It's like I'm, I'm damn. Is there I'm like ready. a movie that you love that everybody else is like, eh, yeah. Mm. Well, you know, my wife laughs at me because I can recite almost damn every word of Major Pain. But other than that, okay, I'm going to give you that one though, because I mean, nothing against Major Pain. Yeah, it's no great shakes, man. <laughs> it's not. It's not a great movie. It's just not a great movie. I, I, I love. Major I love Payne, Damon man. Wayans. I yeah. love Damon Wayans. Major Pain. Yeah. <sighs> It's, so my my son is my my son Cameron. He's funny because he loves it too. I don't know if it causes me, but he's he yeah. When I said you go you 
I'd be yelling at him. He, he'd go, dirt, get dirt. I'm like, really, dude? Oh, man. I'm like, come on, man. Oh, so it's just, he still, man, he still does lines. He does lines from the movie too. So um, he even he even figured out how to text that to me. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> he figured out how to text you, dirt, yes, dirt. Yeah. Oh man. But yeah. Major pain. I'll give you major yeah, I pain. Love, I love major pain. Dreadful man. movie. <laughs> just, just a great comedic a great actor. Movie, dreadful movie. <laughs>